Good evening, sisters and brothers, and uh, welcome to our evening prayer this evening. It's Monday evening, <coughs> and of course I'm outside. Uh, they said it was going to rain today, but it hasn't. It's been a beautiful day here in London. Uh, maybe tonight, who knows? Anyway, I I want to be outside again this evening because it's been so beautiful today, and I've been mostly outdoors today. So we come at the end of another day, another day at the beginning of a new week. And uh, to say thanks to God for keeping us, for sustaining us, for preserving us through this day. And to bring before him all our concerns, all our, uh, all our fears and, and our anxieties and our cares. And so let's let's pray as we as we come to the end of another day. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and O oh Lord, my God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and honor, wrapped in light as in a garment. The sun knows the time for its setting. You make darkness that it may be night. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will make music to my God while I have my being. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And our collect for this evening. Kindle in our hearts, O God, the flame of love which never ceases, that it may burn in us, giving light to others. May we shine forever in your temple, set on fire with your eternal light, even your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Okay, our psalm this evening is Psalm Psalm number 30, uh, Psalm number 28, Psalm 28, Psalm 30 was this morning, Psalm 28. <clears throat> Psalm 28. To you, Lord, I call. You are my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear to me. For if you remain silent, I will be like those who go down to the pit. Hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help. As I lift up my hands toward your most holy place. Do not drag me away with the wicked, with those who do evil, who speak cordially with their neighbors but harbor malice in their hearts. Repay them for their deeds and for their evil work. Repay them for what their hands have done and bring back on them what they deserve. Because they have no regard for the deeds of the Lord and what his hands have done, he will tear them down and never build them up again. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy and with my song I praise him. The Lord is the strength of his people. 
a fortress of salvation for his anointed one. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Amen. Amen. You know, sometimes that, that first bit, uh, it's about injustice, and that's Keller, Keller points this out in his meditation. Um, repay them for their deeds and for their evil work. You know, it's, it's, it's a cry for God to bring justice to those who suffer. When I think of evil people doing evil things, especially to innocent people in the world, like children and so on, you want to say, Lord, repay them for what they're doing. Um, bring, let them, let them feel what they are bringing upon others. Uh, repay them for their deeds. Repay them for what their hands have done. And bring back on them what they deserve. There's that sense of crying out to God to bring justice. You know, in, the, in Revelation, there is, there, the, I think, when, when, when the angel opened the, the sixth seal, I think it was the sixth seal, or the fifth seal, maybe it's the fifth one. Uh, the, the, the saints under the altar are crying out, How long, Lord, before you avenge our blood? How long before you repay them for what they have done to us? And it's that sense where, Lord, when are you going to bring justice on the earth? When are you going to, you, going to judge the wicked, as it were? And it's a cry for God to intervene. Yes, save the, the, the innocent, save the, the, the vulnerable and the weak, but bring down the strong, cut them down, the evil, the ones who are killing and destroying other people's lives. And I, I think of those people in northern Nigeria. When I read Psalms like this, I have them in mind, Boko Haram and and uh, ISIS and all of these other terrorist groups that are in the world that are seeking to, to destroy people's life. I say, Lord, bring them down. You know, let, bring back on them what they deserve. It's a cry for justice. Let's, um, let me read um, Keller's meditation. He calls it the sting of injustice. He says, David fears being dragged away with the wicked to the pit, a word that can mean a dungeon for offenders. He cries to God at the prospect of being unfairly charged and counted as a corrupt ruler. This is a major theme of the Psalms, but not one that most of us in comfortable Western societies can easily understand. Nothing stings so sharply as injustice, and nothing should. So these verses are not simply vindictive, but put into words the protest of any healthy conscience at the wrongs of the present order and the conviction that a day of judgment is a moral necessity. I love that. A day of judgment, a day of reckoning, a day to hold those responsible for their crimes is a moral necessity. And, you know, the, the very center of Christian teaching is that there is a day of judgment coming. One day all the evil will be judged and God will sentence. But sometimes we would like God to judge now, to stop them in their tracks. Not just wait for that day, but to, to do it now. Christians should cry to God day and night against injustice, like the, the, wom the woman in Luke chapter 18 and verse 7. Lord, we pray for justice in our world, for the lifting up of the poor out of their misery, for the breaking of the power of tyrannical regimes, for the end of violence, warfare, racial conflict and strife. Thank you that you are a God of justice. Amen. You know, sisters and brothers, sometimes we feel strange praying these prayers, but we should. We should, because it's not, a, it's not vindictive, it's not personal vengeance and anything like that. We are not praying for our enemies to be destroyed. We are praying for God 
to bring justice. In other words, for God to destroy the evil in people's lives and people's hearts. And we must not be afraid to pray that kind of prayer. That's not the same. That's not saying that they can't, we can't pray for their salvation as well. But it's, there's not a, it's not a mutually exclusive thing. We can pray for the salvation of people, but we can pray for God to judge, uh, bring justice and judge evildoers uh, in, the same, in the same prayer. Anyway, let's move on. Um, Luke chapter 12 is our New Testament reading this evening. Luke chapter 12 from verse 1 to 12. Luke 12, 1 to 12. <clears throat> Luke 12, 1 to 12. It's called Warnings and Encouragements. Meanwhile, when a crowd of many thousands had gathered so that they were trampling on one another, Jesus began to speak first to his disciples, saying, Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight, and what you have whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the rooftops. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do no more. But I tell you, but I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who after killing of the body, after the killing of the body, has power to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. I tell you, whoever acknowledges me before people, the Son of Man will also acknowledge him before the angels of God. But the one who disowns me before people will, all, will be disowned before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When you are brought before synagogue rulers, synagogues, rulers and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. There is there's a lot in this text. I mean, it's a lot of uh, as it, the title is warnings and encouragements. There's there's no one theme. Um, it's very likely that Luke got a lot of this um, the, the teachings, maybe from there, from various places, but put them all together here. Um, what can I pick out of here? Uh, maybe, maybe verse, verse four, five. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but nothing else. But be afraid of the one who can kill body and then throw you in hell. In, in the other gospel it says that can kill both body and soul. You see, and, and, and that's of course God. <laughs> God is the only one who has the power to throw us into hell, to kill body and soul. And, G and Jesus is saying, don't just fear the person who can just kill your body, fear the one who can kill body and soul. The body and has the power to condemn you to hell. And that, Jesus says, is the one we ought to fear. That is God. God. Our greatest fear should be for God. Yeah, you know, that not so much individual people. Jesus is saying individual people can only do so much to you. You know, I've said, you know, what the worst thing that coronavirus can do to us is to kill us. And by doing that, it makes us better. <laughs> you know, but it's a, it's a completely different understanding of reality. The worst thing that someone can do to us is kill us. But by doing that, they make us more alive in Christ. 
And Jesus is saying, it's not that person that we need to fear. It's God we need to fear. Because God has the power to not only kill the body, but also condemn the soul to eternal flames in fire, in hell. That's the one we need to fear. And that's the one that the world doesn't fear. <laughs> you see? The world doesn't fear. The world uh, doesn't have any fear of God. And he is the one that has the power to condemn us into eternal flames. But the world, they only care about this life. They don't care about eternity. Uh, you see. Uh, okay, and then lastly, I, I, I'll pick out another bit here. Um, Jesus said, you know, we are worth, he says, you are worth more than many sparrows. Uh, God is, well, let's start in verse 6. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. In other words, he's saying they are pretty cheap. <laughs> you know, it's not, um, you know, five sparrows sold for two pennies. It's not, you don't, you know, to get five for two pennies, it's a lot. You know, you, they are not that valuable, in other words. And God cares for the sparrow. And then, of course, the the clincher in this text, how much more, how much more valuable are you than birds? You know, I love the birds. I love to come out and watch them feed on the, you know, on the feeder. And, and, and I love to hear them sing and, and, and talk to each other. I just always imagine what they're talking about. It's wonderful. And, and, and Jesus is saying, God cares for the birds. You know, I don't need to feed the birds. God feeds the birds. I feed them because I want them in my garden. <laughs> and, I want to, and I like to watch them. But God already provides for the birds. And Jesus is teaching us that we are infinitely more valuable than birds. And yet we worry. And we don't realize how much God cares for us. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. I'll stop there because it goes on into the, the blasphemy. But I, I can't touch on that. I, I, there's no way. If you have a question on the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, you can ask. But, um, but I can't speak of that. But I, let's go to bed tonight thinking of our value and our worth. That God cares for us more, more infin infinitely more than he cares for birds. And he cares for the birds. Very much so. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we give you thanks for this care that you have. Not just for all of creation. Not just for the sparrow. Not just for the birds. Not just for your creation. But you care infinitely more for us human beings we are more valuable than they and so lord help us not to fear not to worry not to be anxious about tomorrow because you in the same way you provide for the birds you will provide for your children and so lord as we go to sleep tonight may we sleep in peace may we rest in peace like the birds don't have a care in the world but they rest knowing that tomorrow they will still be able to find food and you will still provide for them lord may we be like the birds completely trusting in you without fear without anxiety without worries lord give us that peaceful rest Tonight we pray. Rest in your provision, in your providential care for us, even as you do the birds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we continue to pray for those in our own hearts tonight. We we bring to God the people, the concerns on our on our hearts we i want to pray uh, for reverend david hoyt and his wife bernadette and 
just want to lift them to God again tonight. Lord, hear our prayer for these, your children. Pray for Paul. And we pray, Lord, that you'll give him the help he needs um, to rise above the problem that he's suffering at this very difficult time. Bring the right people into his life, Lord, we pray, who are able to help him despite his protestations of help. Oh, God. Help him, we pray. We pray for Maxine, of course, and the rest of the family, that you will be there for them. Lord, give them your grace, we pray. I pray for Jane Lindsay and uh, for her dad, Andrew. And as they, we pray as they battle their own illnesses, we, we bring them to you. I'll just think of the whole family, Lord, as they go through this difficult time for Jane, for Andrew. Lord, in, in your mercy, hear our prayer for these, your children, and so many more that are on our hearts tonight. Family members near and far, relatives, neighbors, many who don't know you. We think again of the the evil people in our world who are doing evil things. We pray, Lord, that you will intervene in their lives. Bring salvation, arrest them, we pray. And destroy their machinations and their plans. Oh Lord, we pray. We pray, Lord, for your kingdom to come. We pray for your will to be done on this earth as it is in heaven. We pray, Lord, for the eradication of coronavirus, for the eradication of Ill cancer and so many other killers, killer diseases in our world. We pray, we pray for your kingdom, your kingdom of healing and righteousness and, and health and prosperity and hope and peace kingdom of your Holy Spirit to be established in this earth. And so Lord, even as we go to sleep tonight, hear our prayer, we pray for all those that are on our hearts and on our minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let's, we, let's say some of the night prayers. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, Pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and rest tonight, sisters and brothers. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed night, sisters and brothers.